Kylie Jenner has made history by becoming the youngest billionaire in history. She's only 21 years old and her company, Kylie Cosmetics, along with her personal fortune, is estimated to be worth $1 billion. Congratulations to her for managing to amass a billion dollars in wealth by selling women's insecurities caused in part by her surgically created beauty back to them at what, $29 a kit? John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. If you're subscribed right now or are planning on subscribing in the near future, which I would highly recommend, make sure that you have the notification bell turned on so that YouTube just doesn't decide to remove me from your account without me knowing about it or without you knowing about it. I would know about it too. I'd take it personally. But I have to start off by saying I don't care about how much money Kylie Jenner has. I'm not jealous of her. We can still talk about the hypocrisy that is revealed within this whole thing without making those accusations. For those of you not familiar with Kylie Jenner, I don't know of anything that she's done besides being the Kardashian clan that would make her famous, so you're going to have to go ahead and Google her by yourself. But as I said, she broke the record previously held by Mark Zuckerberg and has become the youngest billionaire in history. Her company, which sells lip kits and other cosmetics, is estimated to be worth about $900 million, and then she's said to have about $100 million from other things that she's done, such as modeling and starring on reality television shows. Here's something. You don't get to go about your day-to-day -day life with your head held down because women are oppressed in America and the patriarchy is evil, and then log on your Twitter and then praise Kylie Jenner for being worth a billion dollars the same year that she became able to legally drink. Like, yes, queen! Yes, Kylie queen! Your queen is a fraud! Celebrity worship, it's a symptom of a low IQ individual. And let me explain what I mean by celebrity worship. Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, whichever, whichever one you want to use, Caitlyn, even Kylie's dad, they're infamous, or excuse me, they're famous both because they're vulgar, they're narcissistic, money-obsessed hedonists, and people like to watch them and their lives for a few reasons. One, because people like drama, and two, because women that watch them, they aspire to have the same lifestyle that they see on the show. And the women who are fans of the Kardashians get so defensive when you criticize them. Hey, I think it's wrong that Kylie Jenner gets plastic surgery and then convinces women that they can look like she does if they buy a $29 lip kit. And they just, they look at you like you've just uttered blasphemy. They're, they're so delusional. Everyone is so delusional. You ask someone, hey, do you think politicians are corrupt? 100% of the time, they say, yes, of course. Ask them, do you think celebrities get plastic surgery? Yes, 100% of the time, they say yes. And you say, okay, cool. Hillary Clinton is corrupt and the Kardashians have all surgically altered their appearance in order to sell hope to women that don't have the genetics or money to look like them. Again, just blasphemy. Kylie admitted to getting lip augmentation done. And honestly, I think we can take a look and just take her at her word for it. If you look at the pictures of her when she was 14 compared to now, it's not even the same person. Her nose is slimmed down, her jaw looks reconstructed, her lips obviously changed. This isn't puberty. The human eye can tell too. When you look at someone's body, you can usually tell if it's natural or not. And I'm not gonna put up pictures of her body, but you're welcome to do the research yourself. She's had serious work done. Same thing with Kim. Her brand is literally just that she has a big butt which is also fake, probably. And you can look at pictures from her or of her from 10, 15 years ago. She looks totally different than she does now. They're selling women a false standard of beauty, a standard of beauty that is so false, they had to pay someone else to create it for them surgically. That is wrong. And here's the hypocrisy. The feminists will claim that Kim Kardashian and Kylie Jenner are role models. They empower women with their, their sexual expression. And then they'll also blame men and the patriarchy for enforcing unfair beauty standards on women. Really unfair? Because the standards that the Kardashian clan are selling are somehow fair? They're not. And that's because they all had plastic surgery. If they just naturally looked like that, it'd be a totally different story. But they paid to artificially increase their levels of supposed attractiveness. I mean, if you look at Kylie and Kim before, they weren't, I mean, they weren't bad looking. They definitely were above average, not enough to become iconic. So now they've got work done and now they're known for full lips, perfect hourglass figures. And those are the standards of beauty that are making women insecure, not the male standards of beauty, because the truth is that most men will be attracted to most women. Women overestimate male expectations as a result of media promotion of people like Kim Kardashian. Uh, for example, there was a study done that showed how men rate women based off how fat they are, because of course, feminists complain that men enforce the model type thinness upon women and men tended to describe their ideal female body type as average, whereas women, when reporting what they thought men's ideal body type was for females, they reported it being much thinner than what men actually desired. Despite what feminists are trying to teach young girls, it is not empowering to sell your sexuality. It is not empowering to be known only for your lips or your butt. But, I mean, 
that's only after you've paid to have them altered. Between 2015 and 2016, there was a 34% increase of people in the United States getting butt implants. Why? Why are we like this? Another study found 80% of women in the United States don't like how they look. 53% of 13-year-old American girls are unhappy with their bodies. By the time they're 17, gross is 78%. By middle school, 40 to 70% of girls are dissatisfied with two or more parts of their body. This is what happens. It's not just, I wish I had a slim figure. It's, I want lips like Kylie. I want a butt like Kim. Men literally do not care. I shouldn't say it. Men are actually, we're developing a false perception of female attractiveness because of pornography consumption, but we're going to throw that one on the back burner for now. The point is, is that the only people that are promoting these standards of beauty for women are other women. And young women on social media are not anything close to exempted from this. The feminists will say, oh, it's the male-owned cosmetics industries that promote these standards to oppress women. And it's like, first off, objective standards of beauty exist because of evolutionary psychology, not the patriarchy. Again, we'll put that one on the back burner. But what about Kylie Jenner? She's got 128 million followers on Instagram. That's a one-man operation. Same thing with Kim Kardashian. She's got 130 million followers. And then you've got hundreds of Instagram models, women that literally make a living posting pictures of their butt on Instagram. I am not joking. John, it's a free market, right? Yeah, I'm still pro-free market. I can also have standards of decency that compel me to condemn degeneracy, though. Oh, you're slut-shaming. You say like it's a bad thing. That That's on the back burner, too. So we've got porn, standards of beauty, and slut-shaming. Coming to a theater near you soon. Um... But here's the point, and I'm not as articulate as I'd like to be when talking about this because I know and I have known people that have struggled with their body image. I used to struggle with my body image back when I went through this chubby phase in middle school. It happens to the best of us. But you don't get to attack men for allegedly enforcing unrealistic standards of beauty on women and then also praise women for making a living selling a standard of beauty to women that is so unrealistic that a surgeon had to create it. You do not get to claim that you are empowering women by promoting their right to sexual expression when those behaviors have time and time again been proven to make women less happy. In 2018, the primarily leftist media published 7,600 stories about Malala Yousafzai. I'm, I know I mispronounced that, but she was the young woman that was shot in the head by the Taliban for advocating for women's educational rights. And thank God she survived. I mean, they shot her 18 inches from her left eye. The bullet went through her head, her neck, and then into her shoulder. It's, it's just insane. But in 2018, that same media also published 476,000 stories about Kim Kardashian and 391,000 stories about Kylie Jenner. You can run your own searches through different online news databases. It's really fun. Let's play. Who the media had more fun reporting about in 2018? Was it the woman shot for being an actual feminist in a place where there's an actual patriarchy? No, no, it was not. And you might say, well, that happened a while ago. So obviously the media isn't going to report about it now. Okay. But I ran the same search with Michelle Obama, who's considered to be a great role model for young girls. She only had 206,000 stories published about her. Not even close to Kylie. Not even half of what Kim had. Ran it again with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, feminist and leftist icon. Only 34,000 stories. So it would seem that the same media that complains about the patriarchy and unrealistic expectations for women are also the people spending a lot more time covering the Kardashians than actual female role models. And sure, we might not agree with their politics, but we can at least acknowledge that they've been they've been successful and they're inarguably a better role model for young women than the Kardashians are. And if you think that this balance shifts on social media, you are very wrong. It goes actually more in favor of the sex selling female liberationists, if anything. Uh, it's not good, folks. It's not good at all. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because we are going to do a video about porn, about slut shaming, and about standards of beauty. It's going to be great. It's going to be educational, study after study, fact after fact. It's going to be family friendly, sort of, if you can ignore the, the topics of it. You might not want to make it family friendly. Scratch that one. But uh, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.